Hey, what is up, my chemistry people? Number one, we are going to define electrochemical cell. What the heck is that crazy sounding thing? And differentiate between two different types of electrochemical cells. And then numero dos, we're going to interpret and utilize something called the reduction potential chart. All right, now this unit is all about electrochemistry and electric. <laughs> And electrochemistry is just the study of redox reactions that produce or require an electric current. This is a really important subset of chemical reactions because we use it to power our lives. Now, converting chemical energy to electrical energy is carried out in what we call an electrochemical cell. Sounds really confusing. I just like to think of it as a chemical reaction that involves a redox reaction gaining and losing electrons. Now, there are two types of electrochemical cells that you need to be comfortable with. One is a voltaic cell. Now, this is also known as an interchangeable with galvanic cell. They mean the same thing. This is an electrochemical cell, a redox reaction that occurs spontaneously. And we can harness that flow of electrons to produce an electrical current if we separate the oxidation and reduction half reactions. Now, when we talk about spontaneous processes, we're talking about things that are capable of proceeding in a given direction without needing to be driven by an outside source of energy. And on the AP chemistry test, know that it's important that when you're thinking spontaneous, you should really write thermodynamically favorable. It means the same thing as spontaneous, and we'll talk a lot more about that term as the year goes on. All right, so let's take a time out and talk about this one type of electrochemical cell, the voltaic slash galvanic cell, in a common example, a battery. Now, at this point, just recognize that there's an anode, and that's where oxidation, loss of electrons, will occur. We also have a cathode, that's where reduction, or gaining of electrons, will occur. Your overall redox reaction for this electrochemical cell is gonna combine those half reactions and it's gonna happen spontaneously. You don't need to do anything to use a battery. Now, there's also an electrolyte that separates the anode from the cathode, which we'll talk more about later. Just recognize at this point that electrolyte blocks the electrons from traveling directly from the anode to the cathode and they have to travel through an external circuit. So let's now think about the battery in your cell phone. Essentially, as those electrons are lost by the substance that makes up the anode, and picked up by the substance that gained the electrons in the cathode, that flow of electrons can be harnessed to power your cell phone. Voltaic slash galvanic cell. Boom. Now, the second type of electrochemical cell is what's known as an electrolytic cell. This is a non-spontaneous electrochemical cell. So a non-spontaneous redox reaction. You can only get this reaction to happen when you apply an electrical current. Keep in mind when we talk non-spontaneous, now we're talking about something that's only gonna happen when you put some energy in, in order to get it to happen. Keep in mind that on the AP Chem test, when we're talking non-spontaneous, you really wanna write down thermodynamically unfavorable. Again, a term we'll talk more about as we go throughout the year. So let's come back to your cell phone and let's think about what happens once the battery is dead. We need to recharge our cell phone. In other words, we need to reverse that redox reaction. But if the forward direction was spontaneous, the reverse direction is non-spontaneous. And so the only way to get this reverse reaction to happen is to apply an electrical current, an outside source of energy. Bring on the charger, yeah. In this process, we force the electrons back to where they came from, eventually recharging our battery so that we can then run it again in the thermodynamically favorable spontaneous direction so we don't have to walk around with our phone plugged in. Now, in order to understand what things are gonna gain electrons, what things are gonna lose electrons, how to decide whether something is thermodynamically favored or thermodynamically unfavored, spontaneous, non-spontaneous, you have to have a solid understanding of the reduction potential chart. So as we work through this video, don't forget our good friend Leo. Okay, so first it turns out that the absolute tendency that a substance will gain or lose electrons cannot be measured but we can measure it relative to whether another substance will gain or lose electrons. As we come back to this thrilling reaction and we think about why is oxygen gaining electrons and why is iron losing electrons? Or as you think about, is iron gonna be more or less likely to lose electrons than other things? Or is oxygen gonna be more or less likely to gain electrons than other things? Now, for ease, we're just gonna focus on the relative tendency for a substance to lose electrons or be reduced 
And the half reaction that we're gonna use for comparison is the reduction of the hydrogen ion to hydrogen gas under standard conditions, which we assign a potential difference of zero volts. So that's our starting point for comparison. And then we just make a list. How do things compare to the reduction potential of hydrogen ion to make hydrogen gas to make a reduction potential chart. Okay, so let's time this out and take a look at a reduction potential chart. And you've got this beauty of a chart in your notes. It's important that you take a moment, time out, pause the video, and just sort of look at this chart. Ooh, it's so mesmerizing. Some important things to make note of. First, notice that smack dab in the middle, we have our hydrogen ion reduction with a standard reduction potential of zero volts. Again, that's our basis for comparison. Everything else and their ability to gain electrons is gonna be compared to how easy it is for the hydrogen ion to gain electrons. So the more positive the reduction potential is, and we're gonna use this little E sub reduction symbol, the more likely that substance will be reduced or gain electrons and less likely that it will be oxidized or lose electrons. So as you carefully study your reduction potential chart, notice that all of these things above hydrogen are more likely to be reduced. The reduction potential, so much potential in life. The reduction potential gets larger. So these things like fluorine, hydrogen peroxide, are things that are gonna be really likely to gain electrons. They're gonna be really likely to be reduced. They have really high reduction potentials. The more negative the reduction potential, on the other hand, the less likely that substance will be reduced. Less likely it will gain electrons and the more likely it will be oxidized. So now we're gonna take a little stroll down the bottom portion of this chart and notice our reduction potentials become negative. What that tells me is these things are less and less likely to gain electrons. Notice we can tell that because their reduction potential their potential to gain electrons, their potential to be reduced gets more and more negative. So it's like saying, yo, lithium, you have like no potential in life to be reduced. Fluorine, you have so much potential. And then it's also important to note that switching the sign of the reduction potential will give you the oxidation potential or this E sub oxidation for that substance. So that's important, even though we're often gonna be given the standard reduction potentials, it also tells you the potential for a substance to be oxidized. Okay, so let's think about what that means. As I look at this reduction half reaction for the lithium ion, its reduction potential is three, negative 3.04 volts. This very negative value tells me that this is probably not gonna happen. The lithium ion isn't gonna readily gain electrons. But if I reverse this reaction, I'm gonna reverse the sign of my reduction potential. And notice now it's a very positive value indicating that the oxidation of sol lithium to lithium ion has a lot of potential. It's very likely to happen. So as you're working with the reduction potential list, keep in mind that if you reverse that half reaction to get the oxidation half reaction, you're also gonna reverse the sign of your reduction potential to get your oxidation potential. Okay, and then the last thing just to keep in mind as you think about the reduction potential chart, just remember that in a redox reaction, electrons will flow from the substance that is being oxidized or losing electrons to the substance that is being reduced or gaining electrons. All right, and that finishes us off for this video on the reduction potential chart. Check out the references beneath the video so you can see where I pulled that reduction potential chart from. Woo, and we're done.